In the wake of Obama's promise to ban semi-automatic weapons and to add stronger background checks, gun sales, sales of semi-automatic rifles in particular, have gone through the roof. Think about what that means. It should be obvious that rather than preparing to hand over their weapons, a large number of Americans are getting geared up for a fight. Now, I can't speak for everyone, but I've been listening to a lot of these guys, and a lot of them are dead serious about preparing for a civil war. Now, I'm not 100% sure that those in power expected this response, but I have evidence that indicates that they did. For some reason, the Department of Homeland Security just ordered an additional 750 million rounds of ammunition, in addition to the 450 million rounds purchased earlier this year, which brings the total to 1.2 billion rounds. What stands out when you look at the actual purchase order is that there are massive quantities of hollow point bullets and buckshot. Hollow point bullets are designed to expand rapidly when they hit their target ripping large chunks of flesh off as they exit the body. As such, they're banned by the Geneva Conventions. These bullets can only be used domestically, and it's not for the police. Now, anybody who's ever owned a firearm knows that you don't do large-scale target practice with hollow points. They're expensive, much more expensive than Full Metal Jacket. And the same goes for buckshot. You don't use buckshot for target practice. It's much more expensive than birdshot. This is the kind of ammunition you carry when you expect to engage an enemy, and when you don't want that enemy to survive the encounter. And at 1.2 billion rounds, that gives them about four bullets for every man, woman, and child in America. Why would they need that? Taken by itself, this would appear to be just another element in the preparations for a domestic conflict that have been building up for some time now, along with the military-grade armored vehicles for local police, the militarization of the border, the beginnings of drone flights over U.S. territory, the military drills for domestic house-to-house -house operations, and the NDAA of 2013, which passed with the provisions for military detainment of U.S. citizens intact. But in the context of the current situation, you have to ask, why did they buy such a large quantity of hollow point bullets right now? Could it be the fact that they know that the economy is not going to hold up much longer? And when the situation starts to unravel, they're expecting all hell to break loose? This is not a joke. The U.S. is over $16 trillion in debt. And all indicators show that these attempts to shore up the economy by printing more and more money with QE3 and QE4, it's not working. Remember those toxic assets which caused the 2008 financial crisis? And remember how the U.S. government bailed out the banks supposedly to cover those bad debts? Well, the banks didn't use that bailout money to pay off those assets. Those derivatives are still on the books. Those toxic debts are still on the books. It's a landmine that's just waiting for something to come along and set it off. Now, I don't pretend to know precisely when this powder keg is going to blow, but sooner or later, it will. That much you should count on. And if you're not counting on it, then that means you're going to be caught with your pants down, completely unprepared, without any idea of what's going on. What do you think would happen in such a situation? How do you think your government would be behaving? Do you think that they would be there to support you with their arms outstretched for the people? Kind of like they did in Hurricane Katrina where people were disarmed and herded into stadiums and were not allowed to leave even though they weren't provided with food or water. People were literally dying of thirst inside and they were not allowed to leave. It would be a fatal error to assume that the government is going to help you in the case of a real national crisis. And it would be a serious miscalculation to think that gun-toting conservatives are the real threat, or that the government's goal is to keep weapons out of the hands of criminals. If the government really wanted to keep guns out of the hands of criminals, they wouldn't have sent thousands of automatic weapons straight to the Mexican drug cartels during Operation Fast and Furious. Operation Fast and Furious lasted from 2006 to 2011. Involvement can be traced all the way up to top-level administration officials such as Eric Holder, and it has resulted in hundreds if not thousands of deaths. This isn't a conspiracy theory. All it takes is a simple Google search on Fast and Furious to pull up dozens of mainstream articles from both the U.S. and Mexico on the topic. Here's what the American people need to understand. Those bullets were bought by the Department of Homeland Security, the NDAA and the Patriot Act were put into place, and the laws that they're going to attempt to push through in the coming months serve one purpose and one purpose only, to ensure that the powers that be don't become the powers that were. You and your family, regardless of your political beliefs, are just liabilities for the psychopaths that really own the U.S. government. They won't hesitate for a moment to sacrifice you and everyone you love to maintain their power. If you think that I'm exaggerating, I encourage you to click here to watch The Road to World War III. It's a mini documentary that I made that should help to put the situation into context. If you believe as strongly as I do that this message needs to get out to the American public, then please share it with your friends. Share it on Facebook. Share it on Twitter. And if you want more content like this, then be sure to subscribe to this channel. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And if you want to make sure that you don't miss any of the content that we're putting out, be sure to bookmark our website, stormcloudsgathering.com. We put out bonus content pretty often at this point, so you'll find articles, images, and videos from other sources that I found interesting. We have a new video every Monday and Wednesday, with the exception of holidays, and we have a bonus video coming out tomorrow because we come across some very interesting content. So be sure to be on the lookout for that. And don't forget, if you want to talk about one of these topics that we're covering here, call us Wednesday nights, 10 p.m. Eastern. It's an open roundtable format, and you can bring up any subject that you want.